Welcome to MSL Talk with Tom Caravella, a podcast specifically designed for MSLs and all things field meta. Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. My special guest today is Lori Broman, field director for AstraZeneca. And we talk about setting goals for 2021 and how to achieve tremendous success. So Lori's great. It's a great conversation. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hey, Lori, how are you? Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Doing great. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm really excited. Happy New Year to you. Thank you. We finally are getting this done. We've been talking about it a long time. I have been pursuing you for how long to do this? I think a year. About a year. a year. Yeah. So... Um, but I think everyone that's listening is in for a treat because you're awesome. Thanks. And you, this is the perfect time because it's January and we decided to talk about establishing goals and how to be successful and, um, and you're the perfect person. So, but before we do that, why don't you just do a quick intro and let everybody know, sure. you know, who you are, and what you're up to these days. Sure. So I'm Lori Broman. I have been in medical affairs about 13 years in various field roles including as an MSL, leading a regional team, um, starting and developing the strategy for a national team at a small startup. And now I'm in a transition phase where I'm about to start a new job leading field MSLs for AstraZeneca in the hematology realm. Wow. So that's part of Monday. Yeah, I'm really excited about that's it. That's so exciting. Well, congratulations and good luck. I know you're going to crush it because that's Thank what you, you do. You crush everything. Thanks. Um, so is now a good time, like before we get started, can I tell everybody like the fun fact about Lori sure. Bowman and how <laughs> the you, moment of fame. you won yeah. the showcase showdown on the Price is Right? True story. Absolutely true story. So I actually saw the video. So you were on the Price is Right and yep. you made it to the showcase showdown and you actually won. And, I won. and you were jumping up and down. It was the greatest thing ever. What did, just to remind everyone, like what, did, what exactly did you win? I won... Um, Two Nintendo DSs. That's how I got up on stage. Then I won a meat smoker, a big TV, and three pairs of Valentino shoes. And then I spun the wheel. And in my first spin, I got 95 cents. So I beat out all the other spins. Yep. I was in the showcase and I won a trip to the Outer Banks in North Carolina, a Nissan Juke, which my teenager totaled in less than What? <laughs> She oh was my. fine, but yeah, that memory is gone. Uh, and um, a washer dryer. That's so, so awesome. In total, I won about $36,000 worth of prizes. I love that story. That's like one of my favorite things. It's an awesome <laughs> memory. And I was with my sister and my niece. And yeah. so we talk about it all the time, especially we went on St. Patrick's Day. It, it, um, it taped on St. Patrick's Day in 2015. So whenever St. Patrick's Day comes around, we always have a great memory to share. Oh my God. I love that story. So I couldn't yeah. resist. I had to bring it up. <laughs> um, all right. So this is a big, so we're in a big time right now, right? So yeah. 2020 is gone. I know a lot of people were, you know, horrible year, COVID and, you know, being cooped up and everything else. And obviously not to mention, you know, we lost people and, and you know, there's been a lot of folks that were sick. And so it was, you know, it was a horrible year in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. Every year in January, everybody looks and says, okay, well, and I want to make this a great year. So, you know, being so accomplished, being such a successful MSL and MSL leader. Um, so what's your opinion on goal setting and why is it important to establish goals as we start to get into the new year? Yeah. So we have to kind of have a frontier pioneer mentality this year. Mm -hmm. It's going to be different from other years. And we're not really even sure how much more different it can be. Um, is it going to open up? Is it going to open up and close again? How are providers going to feel about meeting with industry people, both commercial as well as medical? How is that going to play out? So I think we're definitely at a crossroads with regard to field interactions. And I think now more than ever, it's really important that we are able to gauge our value Mm -hmm. um, and really measure impact in the field as opposed to just numbers. And also to be more careful and thoughtful about pre-call planning. What is it that we want to accomplish when we're in front of a thought leader or in front of any healthcare provider and really be thinking strategically 
everyone's time is really valuable. If we're meeting remotely, um, people have some remote meeting exhaustion. We want to make sure that we're getting the most out of their time and respecting their time. Got you. Yeah. So, you know, uh, pre-call planning. I love that. I think a lot yeah. of times we, especially when we, when, you know, you're a little more accomplished and you've been doing it for a while, you know, in the beginning, newer MSLs, they make it a habit. They make it a point, their managers and trainers encourage them to do pre-call planning. It's important. And then as you're in your territory for a while, you're like, ah, oh, all right. You know, I think I got this. I know what to do. Um, so let's talk about that. Like what, as we look into 2021, it's a new year and there's this virtual environment, you know, KOL access is different now. So like what goals are important? Like, how do you establish, like, what are you looking for in your pre-call plan? And, you know, how can somebody coordinate and organize themselves better as they prepare for these engagements? Yeah. So I think there's a couple of ways to do this. First of all, when you approach a meeting, you need to be thinking, what is it that I need to know? What is it that I want to get out of this meeting? Yeah. And then kind of work backwards. Is there a slide deck that is provided for me that could help me accomplish this goal? Are there some open-ended questions that I could ask to try to get at whatever I need to get from the KOL or the healthcare provider? So I think you really have to um, think ahead using tools and also those open-ended questions to get what you want. I'm guilty of it, my, that I didn't pre-call plan, especially as an MSL in my later years. I thought of a lot of the thought leaders as my friends. Yeah. But now I think is a time that we have to really be very conscious of their time and making sure that we're providing the company value as well. Yeah. So do you, do you recommend, you mentioned, you know, having the right question, you know, asking the right questions. Do you recommend making a list of questions, open-ended questions, and, you know, really having that in front of you so that, you know, you really are prepared as to what you want to ask to be able to get that inf the right information out of the person? You know, I think you have to read the room once you get there, but I definitely always would have a few questions in my back pocket mm -hmm. um, to get at what I want to know. So yes, I do highly encourage that. And those questions should be in alignment with whatever your goals are for your medical affairs team, uh, whatever your direction is from, from your supervisor. And obviously that's a big thing. It's, it's hard to, for, you know, it's hard for you to really answer a lot of these questions because, you know, goals are, should be established by the company. Yeah. Right. So, but in, when you look at MSL goals, metrics, you know, KPIs, right. There's always the quality versus the quantity. There's a qualitative versus the, the quantitative. What's your philosophy and how should somebody look at their territory and their goals um, in how they, not just, follow what the company is saying, but how can they establish their own personal, you know, performance goals? Gotcha. So I think that performance should be a combination of quantity. Mm -hmm. You have to get in front of people. Things have to happen. Quality. When you're there, you have to be able to take something from that meeting and report that back to the company, be it an insight or some type of actionable item or an under, or maybe there's a misunderstanding about our product. So it has to be qualitative, it has to be quantitative. And then in some cases it has to be observed, particularly in early career. Um, your manager has to observe that those relationships are developing, that you're asking the right questions and that those relationships are moving, uh, are developing over time. It's every meeting is not an introductory meeting. At some point you're getting into the science and deeper into the science with each, with each consecutive meeting. Yeah. Um, one thing that I like to do um, that I've had a lot of success with with MSL teams is something called the scientific continuum. Okay. Where you, um, as, a, as a team, the team decides, you know, sort of what are the misunderstandings about our product or what is it that we want our thought leaders to know about our product? And what is someone who really understands our product look like? How are they speaking about it? We kind of gauge where are those thought leaders from, at, from the first meeting and how do we get them from really maybe not knowing much about our product or having a misunderstanding about our product to really being a thought leader, a true thought leader about our product or somewhere in the middle, at least they're very knowledgeable about our product 
and they can make the best decision when they have the appropriate patient in front of them because they're armed with the scientific knowledge. Um, and so we've been able to um, gauge where thought leaders are on the scientific continuum and actually measure how many steps we're able to move them towards being a true thought leader um, based on different scientific buckets. Mm -hmm. So that's a way that you can actually show impact in the field outside yeah. of just numbers because numbers don't tell the whole story yet. We all know you could get into a meeting and, and you're there, and you're there for 30 minutes, but you never actually got to what the focus of the meeting should have been. Yeah. So how do you, like, is that something that you track through insights? So you, you mentioned this word scientific continuum. Is that like really a formal word that you use with your team and you hold them accountable to track that through their MSL insights? So uh, we you can track it a bunch of different ways. I've seen very formal ways of tracking it. I've seen very informal ways of tracking it. I typically have my MSLs pick maybe five or 10 thought leaders who they feel like their relationship isn't that great with. They, they need to really get their relationship going better. And actually maybe the thought leader or the, um, the healthcare provider doesn't completely understand the best place to use our product and when they, when they might have the appropriate patient. Um, and then I have them do it on a smart sheet or even on an Excel sheet and kind of document with each appointment, where are they? And we provide very clear guidance on whether it's, um, what, what it means to be a knowledgeable KOL versus a true thought leader KOL, somebody that could go out and speak for us. That would be something different. So um, yeah, we could be done in a bunch of different ways. It's not really tracked through insights. For me, insights is something that's actionable that we have okay. to take action on. Right. Um, and so it's more tracked less formally, but I've also seen other bigger companies do it very formally. But it is a way to show that, hey, we're moving the needle yeah. towards the understanding of our product. And we're not just checking the box that we had 10 appointments or six appointments or five appointments this week. But it is a goal, right? It's yeah. a goal that you're getting that KOL to be the advocate and the expert that you want them to be and that hopefully they want to be. Well, we want them to have all the knowledge they need to make the best decision they can mm -hmm. when that next human being is in front of them. Right. That next treatment. That's right. what we want. If it's our product, great. If it's a competitor's product, great. But we want them to at least have the knowledge. Yeah. Got you. Um, I, I love that. I mean, I think that when we look at goals, we often think, and, you know, I was kind of thinking, you know, as we talked about this, that we were going to get, go down that, you know, that slippery slope of qualitative versus quantitative and talk about, you know, specific, but that's really, um, that's a goal that I think is, it should be evident for every MSL. And maybe not for every KOL, because I think that it's, you know, it's, 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 that's a difficult task, but I think it's important to, you know, to have, to establish that type of relationship, um, but also to be able to be that type of resource for your KOLs and have that type of relationship. So what other advice do you have? I mean, as we start to look at, now we're kind of getting into, we're talking about goals but we're also kind of getting into like territory excellence and, you know, KOL engagement. So what other advice do you have as people look into 2021, again, different yeah. year, what else do you think is important? I think we really have to embrace technology. One of the things that I want to work on with my team is making sure that when they have a virtual appointment, and I think some of them are going to be virtual, um, probably most of them, I've definitely had some appointments myself um, in my current role where I've walked a KOL from their car <laughs> to the edge of the door. We've met from the coffee shop, walking to the building, uh, wearing our masks and just being outside. So there are a lot of different things that you can do, but I think embracing technology. And one of the things that I um, alluded to that I want to do with my team is make sure that when we have a virtual interaction, it's very consistent. They know they're talking to AstraZeneca they know this is their MSL and not the commercial person. Yep. The audio is good. The mm -hmm. video is, is consistent and good. And it's very clear why we're all here. Um, because I think it's hard to have Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting after Zoom meeting. And I actually feel like we're working harder during COVID because we're not traveling. Everyone knows we're home. And so everyone knows we're available at all hours. 
So um, I definitely think embracing technology, making the most consistent interaction possible when it's virtual, finding alternative ways like walking from the coffee shop to the office or walking from the office um, door to the to their car, whatever it might be to meet. And then hopefully as things open up later in the year, we can have some of those outdoor meetings as well. I mean, I don't know that uh, we'll ever have the type of access that we had before. So we have to make the access that we have right now meaningful. And I always encourage my team to also have some innovative ideas. Do you have other ideas on how we can make these meetings successful? Yeah. Let's just throw anything up against the wall and see what sticks and let's try it. Um, because the information still needs to be gleaned. The, yeah. There's tons of surveys out there that say that the healthcare providers still want to meet with their MSL. And they're actually missing the interactions with their MSL. That helped them um, be the best uh, healthcare provider that they can be and understand the, the newest and the latest and the greatest data. We're still um, publishing data. So that still has to be out there. And that still yeah. needs, information still needs to be gleaned. So when you say, so as you, as I'm listening and as you're, you're talking about technology, so technology yeah. is a big, it's a big word. It's a big term. Um, and we think, you know, we think video, we think Zoom, we think, you know, Teams and all these other technologies, but what about email? What's your feeling on email interaction um, as an engagement resource? Cause there's, I've had, I brought this up a lot on this podcast and I get a lot of different reactions. So I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on email engagement. I don't think a lot of scientific rigor happens for, via an email engagement. <laughs> I think it's fine to keep the wheels going. Yeah. Um, I think it's fine to yeah, just keep kind of keep the relationship going. I'm busy right now. I don't have time for another, okay, check in maybe quarterly or every other month or, or whatever um, you deem is appropriate based on what that thought leader wants, the level of interaction that that thought leader wants. wants. But I don't think there's a lot of scientific rigor happening um, mm -hmm. via email. So better than nothing, but low on the totem pole for me. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's your feeling on... So at some point in time, we are going to be able to travel again. When I say we, I mean MSLs. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not an MSL, but I kind of consider myself in this space. So when I say we, I'm talking about everybody that's listening and everybody that's trying to transact business and, and do a, a great job in their territory eventually is going to be able to travel again. So are you concerned with travel reluctance or with you know, maybe because people are getting so used to the resources and the tools that they have, um, there being a lack of face-to-face -face interaction. I have found that my virtual interactions are as good, if not better than my mm. real in-person interactions, mm. with the exception of medical meetings. Okay. Um, but kind of like what you and I are doing, um, I think they've been just as good. Uh, when, when the quality is good, when we're both in the right head frame of mind to actually talk about the science and what needs to happen. I also feel that it's created a little bit of, a little bit more intimacy, whereas I've met some of my thought leaders, pets, children, yeah. spouses. I can yeah. see the pictures on the wall. Like you and I had a conversation about your lab yeah. um, <laughs> and the wall. I can see the pictures on the wall. They can see mine. Um, and so it has created a little bit more intimacy in that way as well. And we also have this shared experience of COVID. Like how are you dealing with COVID? What has surprised you the most about COVID? So you have a little bit more of a shared experience with your thought leader. So I have felt that they're as good as my in-person interactions with the exception of maybe if it was a group meeting or a group presentation where maybe not everyone could participate because we were on Zoom, I think those that has lost a little bit. And of course, the medical meetings have definitely lost a little bit for me as far yeah. as meeting with yeah, um, thought leaders. Sure. So I'm not really worried about my about the MSLs not wanting to go back in the field. I think people have to do what they're comfortable with. Yeah. Um, but the bottom line is we work for a company that has expectations for us and those expectations need to be met. So you need to figure out the way to do it best for yourself. Yeah. No, but I love that perspective. I love the idea of looking at a Zoom call as a more intimate experience into that person's really kind of personal life where you see pictures on the wall, you kind of see their environment, you just get a feel for them. Um, 
which you not you won't get that when you meet them face to face. No. Nope. See the, the but see I'm a hugger. So you you know like <laughs> I'm old school. Like I'm a handshake hugger kind of guy. And I know MSLs can't do that. But if I'm at a medical conference, I'm at, you know, a medical affairs meeting, I love to see people. I love to get that human interaction. Totally different for MSLs, of course. Um, but I think that there's benefits to both. There's benefits to the, the video engagement, like you just mentioned, the virtual engagement. Um, but I also think that there's a lot of benefits to being able to actually see somebody physically and, you know, um, and interact that way. So, but I love that insight. That's great. Yeah. It, it's just been a little bit different. And I think all of it together. So maybe having a Zoom meeting, seeing them once in their office, seeing them at a medical meeting or meeting them for coffee or whatever it might be, all of it together just builds upon the relationship. Well, and you're so positive. Like the one thing I can say about you since the day I met you is every, every interaction I've ever had with you has been upbeat, positive. I, I enjoy talking to you. I look forward to talking to you. So I think that speaks volumes for you and for the way I'm sure you're going to lead your team. But I think that your attitude in how you engage with people is as important as the means of engaging with that person. Yeah, I, I, I think people feel that. Um, you know, we're not just here for a goal, we're all here for the human experience. Yeah. And I think people, you know, leading with authenticity and who you really are is really important in, in what we do, as important as the science. Yeah. How do you think, this is just, this is a professional question, kind of personal question, but how do you think, obviously right now, interviewing is all virtual. Yeah. It's all video. Mm -hmm. How do you think the future of interviewing is going to be once travel bans get lifted and all this other stuff? Do you think that we're going to go back to the old days where everything's in person interviews? Or do you think that there's going to be a lot more video interviewing? I think there'll be a lot more of vetting okay. you know, video interview, but I think when it comes back down to the final couple of candidates, I believe it will be in person. I want it to be in person. I feel like a lot is lost. Um, when you're deciding to work with somebody day in and day out, it's a big decision. And yeah. it's a big decision for the candidate as well. And I think that they deserve to see what is what does the office building look like? Yeah, absolutely. So how do I get there? Does it look especially if you're looking at a startup or something, is it put together? Does it seem like employees are happy? Yeah. Um, am I greeted well? Right. Um, I've been surprised at video interviews. I've had people not get dressed up, um, not shower, clearly coming from the gym. And I think that's, an, that's a mistake um, to be too casual in this Zoom world because we're all at home. I think you really have to treat every interaction, every interview, every thought leader interaction as a true professional interaction. Totally agree. I can't <laughs> not agree with you. I've had so many interviews go south because the person was not prepared and camera ready for the interview, the presentation, or, you know, just, I've had the same comments, you know, you know, we would have hired him, but he looked like he just got done mowing his lawn and it just didn't look like he took the interview seriously. True story. Yeah. So I think it's just one of the, as we're talking about goals and moving into 2021 with the right frame of mind, with the right, you know, focus and the, the right idea on how to transact business. I think it's just really important that we bring our A game, whether we're talking to somebody on the phone, whether we're on video I think it's just really important to bring your A game, look your best, sound your best, be positive, be prepared, you know, know what questions to ask, do your homework, do your research. Same thing, whether it's a, it's a K-Well interaction or whether it's an interview. If yeah. you go into it not having been prepared and not excited about it, not bringing a level of energy and enthusiasm, the other person's going to pick it up, whether it's in person or on video or on the phone. Yeah, 100% agree. Um, I think this year, Tom, it's going to be a little harder to stay on track. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I chatted with my new team earlier um, this week, and some of them haven't even met each other because of COVID. Yeah. We have some new employees. So, so having that team atmosphere. One thing um, that the MSLs that I lead 
initially hate, but then they love it, is um, I believe in writing down your monthly accomplishments. So this is outside of, outside of, oh, I met with 30 KOLs this month. Any, any special project you're, you're involved in, yep. any KOL that you were able to move across that scientific continuum for the first time in a year, um, any tools that you're developing for the field, write it down. Mm-hmm. What is it that you did? What core value is it aligned with for our company core values? And did it have an impact, impact locally, regionally, or nationally? And then we look at that on our say once a month on our one-on-ones or whenever you want to look at it. And so you can really get a handle on how much you've accomplished over the year. And then it's pretty surprising when you look back at that and say, oh my gosh, I did 15 things that had a national impact. I've done 20 things that had a local impact or a regional impact. Um, And then when you need to do your mid mid-year review and your end of the year review, you have everything already written down. So it's hard to get started, but once you get started, you take 10 minutes a month, the end of the month, when you're doing all your other knickknacks to close out the month, write down your monthly accomplishments. And I've also found that helpful during slow times to keep myself on track to say, Hey, what was I doing January last year? Yeah. Yeah. How can I do those are the things I was able to do January last year. I should be able to do them January this year um, it, with whatever science-based project we have going on. That's um, great advice. And that's yeah, great and advice I, really for any MSL that's out there, if, whether that's a requirement from your company or not, for you to be able to track that to help keep, your, keep yourself motivated, organized. Um, you know, having a good system of reporting and keeping ourselves accountable, but also celebrating the success that we have. I think for all those reasons, I think that's a phenomenal idea. How do, how do your people typically do that? Is it a spreadsheet? Is yeah. it a, just a Word document? It's a spreadsheet that one of my people many years ago made, and I've kind of taken it with me all along and adapted it um, for the various organizations that I've been part of. Um, and I don't require it, but I yeah. tell them this. If my boss comes to me and asks me what you do, every day yeah and there's 10 of you or there's 20 of you guess what i'm going to look for i'm going to look for that list of monthly accomplishments and if i don't have it it's going to be hard for me to shine a light on you and that's what i want to do because i want to make you the best person i want to shine the brightest light on you possible and make you um seem that you're really contributing to the organization to be able to articulate that very clearly that's awesome i love that that's great advice so just to wrap it up um you've been awesome i mean this is really good stuff What's your last piece of advice for people as they go into 2021? I would say be innovative and be ready to pivot. Okay. Some things are going to work. Some things are not going to work. We may be open. We may be shut down. We may be all remote. We may be half and half. I think you just got to be ready to bitch be adaptable. Yeah. Let's let's leave it there because I think that that's so so important, and I think that if we've learned anything from last year, um, you just nothing's what it seems, and you just have to get up every day and be ready to go to battle and do a good job and and uh, pivot's a great word. So, um, well, listen, I wish you a tremendous 2021 in your new job. AstraZeneca is very lucky to have you. That's Thank sure. you. I'm, I can't wait to start. Monday's my big day. All right. Well, good luck. I know you're going to be great. And thank Thank you for joining me. This was awesome. My pleasure. All right. We'll talk soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the show. If you've enjoyed it, please subscribe so that you don't miss episodes in the future. And feel free to leave a rating or a review or a comment. Thanks again. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.